Hello and welcome to a whole new chapter in the online study circle. Welcome to the discovery of the energy level that shapes how you actively interact with the world and with this life through the body that is yours, through the mind that is yours, and through your emotional setup. For all of that is organ function and energy. I'm Matthias Roth, and whether you've been studying in this format for a while, or whether you're just getting on board for this exciting new segment, let me give you an idea of what you can expect from the 15 months of investigation into this particular subject, and why I feel so passionately about it. Organ function energy in Jinshin Jitsu is called the manifesting level of energy. So it stands right between what we call the unmanifest, the world of life energy, universal aliveness being fed into your system all the time, as well as the energy of the core of your being being fed in all the time, as well as that whole level of an understanding of the basic life impulses that we're always made up of and that are invisible at the root and yet they show up in the way we act on one hand. And then there is the manifest body, the manifested, finished, built body that we often concern ourselves with and that needs to be looked after and cared for and often fixed. Organ function energy is not the energy level that does that, the fixing of the body. It does help with that. It's a very minor part of what it does. Why this organ function energy is called organ function energy is because it constantly helps you shape your life and shape your body and shape your thinking and shape your feelings or at least contribute to that shaping process. Expect that in the course of these 15 months you will feel how much more active a part you can take in the shaping and the refining of the way you are in the world, of the way you are in your body, of the way you move your body, of the way your thoughts move you and you move them, and the way your emotions move you and you move them and with them. Expect to get to know yourself from that angle of not being the administrator of a life that's been plucked on your desk for you to process and work with. Expect to discover a whole different notion of what processing life means. Yes, there is stuff being fed to you through physical existence. God knows, you know, there's the stuff you eat and the stuff you breathe and the informations you take in and the sensory data that you take in all the time, what you see and hear and taste and touch and smell. You are processing that, but not in a passive receptor sort of way. You've been dealt this life, now you have to like process it. You know, it's been plunked on your desk, get on with it. No, you process it in very, very different ways according to just how much of that primal aliveness comes through. And this, as I hinted at earlier, includes both universal or transpersonal aliveness, aliveness itself, the energy of universal source, we often say in Jin Jin Jitsu, and your core aliveness, the stuff that you came in with but that's been dampened, the delight that you came in with but that doesn't always find itself reflected. So, the more contact there is with the unmanifest aliveness, the more resilient you will be in the way you respond to what the manifest experience brings to you. However, there's also stuff constantly coming in from the unmanifest level. Your dreams, your impulses, your visions, your remembrances beyond space and time of what life and your life could be about. So you pick that up with a different kind of aliveness if your body is grounded in its organic existence. So when this side is strong, that falls on very different ground. And when that side is strong, this falls on very different ground. How these mesh, and more importantly, how you are active in the middle of that meshing. That is something you're not going to just hear about and learn about. This is something you are going to feel and experience in the course of these 15 months. 
this month, will be dedicated to the discovery of the big picture of organ function energy, who is it? And the next two months will look more specifically at two subgroups of organ function energy, as you'll come to understand later. And then, the 12 months that will start in the original airing of this, in the month of April of 2022, and finish in the month of March 2023, will look at one aspect of organ function energy each month. One aspect of organ function energy. You hear me use the singular here. Mary Burmeister very wisely chose to say 12 organ function energy. Now, she borrowed that directly from Japanese, which simply doesn't modify words when they are in singular or plural. You know, so it's one egg, two egg, three egg. One organ, two organ, three organ. In English, we can't really do that, but it also doesn't hurt our ears in a big way. 12 organ function energy is one cycle of bodybuilding and life unfolding energy that is without interruption and without end. We, for practical purposes, subdivide it into 12 aspects and we do so for good reasons. We find out that there is a journey that this body designing, this body building, this body writing energy pursues a certain sequence of going out to draft the arms and the way we reach out into life and then back in to draft the head and gut where we process and take home what we've reached out towards and then a movement that goes down from head to toes to further process and integrate and then a movement that comes up back to the vital center to further develop arms and your and my ability to reach out into life and then an ability to take all of that home and hold it and call it mine and then an ability to integrate and digest and process and then an ability to come alive with that and flow. That will be the basic pattern we'll go into in the feeling exercise today already and look at in greater detail in the next two chapters. That is one indivisible flow which nonetheless has 12 aspects that we can distinguish because from here to all the way out in the fingertips is one very decisive energetic impulse and desire that to get out there. And then as at the fingertips it reverts to flowing back into the body that is being formed is a clearly distinguishable other energetic desire and impulse. So it makes sense. To look at 12 aspects, as long as we bear in mind that they're not truly separate from one another. Hmm? So you cannot truly say where one ends, you cannot say that it ends. You can say where, clearly say where, it changes direction and changes its main orientation therefore. Hmm? Just as you can feel yourself in those adventurous moments reaching out for a new experience, wanting something and very much reaching out and you can feel and quite clearly usually when the movement starts going the other direction and you want to take things in more, you want to return home so to speak. You can observe it in small children in a fascinating quick sequence of events often. Children are so much faster than we adults are of moving from ah into oh, etc. and back. That resilience of being able to move elegantly through different stages is a big part of what organ function energy will help you discover and unfold. You will discover just how much more active you can be in the way you interact with life and life interacts or gets to have an effect on you and you will do so more elegantly, as I just said. Elegance, to me, is a very functional and specific term here. I mean it much in the way that, say, a mathematician or natural scientist would call a certain proof that they have found, or a theorem, elegant, when it is a certain number of things, short, 
easy to understand and follow, and it delivers considerable results. So elegance is not about you know, outer things, outer signs of refinement or exclusivity or something like that. It is about the easeful way, the natural elegance that processes have, like, you know, this elephant grass here, this is the way nature is in so many ways, and you and I, of course, are nature. One of the uh, separations that our Western minds have created that um, serve us least is the separation between human beings and nature. We are nature and there's deeply ingrained in us an understanding of when processes are as effortless and flowing as they can be. And this term of elegance to me does not imply at all that we'll only have the fine things in life and the gentle and soft emotions. Elegance to me refers specifically to the ease with which we can move from one state to another, to another, to another. And when life comes with ruptures and eruptions, we can land on our feet elegantly from that or easily from that as well. Meaning, we observe ourselves having more resources this time than the last time we fell into a situation like that. Coming back from it more quickly and at less cost to our energetic setup than earlier times. Or when we fall on our feet more harshly than we have in the past, at least we are kinder with ourselves about that. The more you can feel who each of these aspects is and who you are within each of these aspects as you express them, the more means you will have and develop for dealing with life in an ever more differentiated way. So your body moves in a more and more differentiated way. It can do more things with less effort. Your mind navigates all of its thinking in a more and more differentiated fashion. It doesn't sit on the same patterns and God help us not on the same opinions all the time. It becomes more elegant. And finally, your emotions don't stay stuck. They still have a full range of movement. In fact, they may well, they very likely will, discover a far wider range of movement than many of us have often allowed themselves. And they will have a much more differentiated flow and feel to them. Bringing this differentiation into your life and the way you live and shape it yourself is going to be a major fruit of this study that is so centered on feeling, that takes you into a feeling exercise every month, that what your mind may understand and what your whole energetic sensitive system may feel is then echoed by your body and understood through the body cell level.